Hello, I'm Clarence Stogner from AT Controls and we're here today to briefly discuss how to uh, tear apart and rebuild a Series 33 multi-port valve. First, we want to go through a few of the, uh, the features of the valve. We uh, can be made into a, a three-way, a four-way, or a five-way just by adding additional ports to it. Also on our website, we have a little uh, brochure that goes through all of the uh, different port orientations, which are a little bit easier to see than our catalog. They have the green flow pass coming out, so it makes it a little bit easier to see so you can look at all the various options. The Series 33 valve is available in quarter inch through four inch sizes with the ISO 5211 direct mount for uh, easy actuator mounting on all sizes. We offer uh, eight standard balls that we have in stock for L ports, T ports, vertical L's, uh, bottom entry, side entry, it just goes on and on. So, so we have a lot to offer with this valve. The other thing we do is as a uh, engineering and triac, we offer a variety of special balls. This is a special one we made for uh, an air handling project. As you can see, it's fairly unique. We also make pig stops in the valves we do for uh, process handling. So with that, that in mind, we can uh, move on to the basic how to take the valve apart. The other thing too is on our website, we have a complete set of instructions in our uh, IOM that you can download and get to it anytime you want. So the first thing you do is as usual with any valve that you take out of a pipeline, you got to make sure that you can either be repaired in line or on a bench. It's a little bit easier to do it on the bench, but you want to make sure that any hazardous chemicals that may have been in the valve have been cleaned and it's safe to handle. So the first thing we want to do when we take a multi-port valve apart because of the different locations of the ports, we want to mark all the locations to make sure that we put it back together in the same way. Especially important on this, as we'll get to in a second, is on the blind ports, the retainers have a small hole drilled in them to relieve internal pressure. So if we get one of these blind retainers into a port, then when you rebuild the valve, it's going to leak. So that's just a little heads up there. We'll explain that a little bit more as we get into it. Hey, when you're disassembling the valve, be sure to keep your end caps and retainers together for uh, easy reassembly. So the first thing we want to do is label all the ports. So you can do that with just a simple Sharpie, just by putting a one by each of the ports, or a two, a three, and then a four over here. And then the bottom port, we'll get to that later. Okay. Okay. And here, as you can see, when we do a close up, is the hole that we were talking about for the blind retainers, because once we take one of the port retainers off, you notice that that hole is not there. Then we also have our body gasket and our retainer seal and our seat. So these are available with uh, flanged ends, threaded in, butt weld, socket weld, or sanitary in connections. And now if you notice on this retainer, there is no hole in this retainer because it's a regular threaded sealing port. So we'll repeat this two more times here. The other thing is you notice that all of the internal parts on the Series 33 are machined, and the advantage of that is that we can actually add cavity fillers to this valve for um, certain applications where that is required and we also keep those in stock. So if you buy a standard valve and you want to convert it to a cavity filler in the field, you just have to buy a cavity filler repair kit and away you go. Okay. Now at this point you can see we're down to the ball and the bottom seat, so I'm just going to remove the handle. 
so we can turn the valve upside down and take off the bottom port. And need to label this one B. And once again, it was a blind port and it has a hole drilled in the retainer. So now at this point, we can just simply remove the ball straight up. And you notice it also has a slight trunnion on the top, which lines up with the stem to give you a little bit better alignment. On the four inch valve, we also, it comes uh, with a trunnion on the bottom for better uh, guiding and sealing since it's a very large ball there. The only time you don't get the trunnion obviously is with a bottom entry valve. Okay, so now we have the basic valve disassembled, and I will flip it back over and show you how to take the packing out real quick. Be very careful when you re-tighten it here to not to uh, damage any of the sealing surfaces. So we have a lock tab holding the nut down here to prevent the stem nut from coming loose during uh, normal cycling. So we just line that tab up with the window here. And okay. On certain sizes, you need a special socket to take the nut loose. On this size, we don't, but the, um, we have the dimensions for those if you need them. Basically, just put them in the lathe, turn down a little section at the top so you can set it in here and turn it off. So we put it back in the vise for a second. stem nut, locking tab, Belleville washers to keep the uh, packing tight during thermal cycling as it goes up and down the, thermal, the Belleville washers will keep the uh, packing secure. And then we knock it down, we have our Viton O-ring seal for additional sealing and then in the bottom of the valve right here, we have our pyramidal stem seal, which is a thrust washer and an additional stem seal, combined with our packing, virgin PTFE V-ring packing in the top here. So at this point, we want to inspect all of our parts, inspect our ball for any damage that may have happened during the wear and tear, see if it needs any polishing. Then we want to inspect our seats, probably replace those with a repair kit, which you get all of those. All your repair kit part numbers are listed in the back of your IOM here, along with all the parts. And all your part numbers are listed here for uh, reordering purposes. So now to reassemble it is a little bit there are a couple of things that we'll go into in detail because with the five seats here, we want to make sure we get everything balanced and, and seated at the right time. So the first thing we'll do is reinsert the, uh, the stem, bring her back up, insert the uh, spacer, Belleville washers, lock tab, and and the nut. And the torque values for all of this is also located in your IOM. Get that down, torque it to the proper value, and then realign the tab. See, right now it's slightly off, but we can, once you get it to the right spot,
So you use your torque wrench to uh, tighten it down to the proper torque, line her up, then you come through your window again, boom, and line her back up, get going. Now, since this is a T-port valve, you notice on the top of the port, it's engraved with a T, which happens to line up with the T-port in the valve here. So when you put your valve back together, we're gonna make sure that this T aligns with that T. The top of each stem on a Series 33 is engraved with the flow pattern. In this case, it's a T, it could be an L, a VL, double L, whatever, but the flow path is engraved in the top of the stem so you know how your um, flow is going through your valve. Line it right up there. And our T is facing to the front. Oops. So now our T is facing to the front and we set her back in there. And just be sure you don't drop the ball. <laughs> okay, then we want to put the top port back on to re replace your uh, seats. Make sure it's got the hole in it for the retainer. Now to ensure that we get the ball perfectly aligned up, there's a little bit of play in there right now, back and forth. So then we want to take, let's see, start with number one here. Okay. So if you notice the, uh, we have holes in the ball. In this case, three out of four sides have holes and only one side has a solid ball. When we tighten our seats back down, we always want to tighten against the curved surface, not against the hole area. So we will put that one back in there. And just run them down finger tight. Then flip it over 180. Go for number two. Yep, there we go. Okay, just finger tight. Okay. At this point, we've allowed gravity to align the ball with the seats and the four sides. Okay, now we want to rotate the ball around a couple times just to make sure it's running freely. Okay. Take our port protectors off so we can look in and make sure we're tightening up against the round portion of the ball. Okay, so we'll start off with the front one here. So we'll just bring them down just snug. This is very important when we're doing the uh, STFE or the 50% stainless, 50% Teflon seats because they're much harder. So we need to gradually work those in a little bit at a time, turn them, tighten, turn, 
to form the seat to the ball. If you just tighten them all down, once really tight in the beginning, you're going to probably end up cutting your sheets or they're going to leak for you as you go, go along. So since that one, we started off here, then we'll rotate it 180 degrees. Back over to here, tighten up the back one. Just bring her down so she's snug. And then rotate it over to one of the side ports. Now you can start to feel the uh, valve getting a little bit harder to turn now. And for the final port, we'll turn it 180 degrees. Okay, and then we turn it a couple times just to make sure everything is still operating smoothly. And it's getting tougher. Okay. Then at this point, we need to get our torque wrench out and start torquing the valves down to, say, 50% of the recommended torque. Then we'll come back, turn the valve a couple more times, and then torque the valve to 100% of the torque and we can just go ahead and torque this one right down to the torque value and we're ready to go here. Always tightening in a diagonal pattern. So then at this point the valve is ready to be put back in service. So once you put it back in service either with the threaded connections or if it's a butt weld or a socket weld that's been welded in line you want to make sure that when you pressurize again check for leaks Make sure the actuator and the handle is reassembled properly. And then after it's been in service for a couple of days, go back and recheck your bolt torques due to thermal cycling and uh, be ready to go again for another long service life.